welcome UCI Anteater community. Um, my name is Meredith Kwok. I am the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations for the Program in Public Health. And you are here joining us for the UCI Alumni Association Wellness Wednesday, edition number two. So on behalf of the Alumni Association, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, again, if you didn't attend last week and this is your first Wellness Wednesday, just to give you some background, each Wednesday, one of our alumni chapters will be hosting a virtual event to present some sort of topic or activity that promotes wellness and hopes just to connect all anteaters across the globe in a, in a spirit of community and, and hope. I know we could all use a little friendship and positivity right now. So tonight's event is hosted by the Public Health Alumni Chapter. And um, we have Z Ningo here joining us. Um, she is what we would like to call an anteater squared. So that means she has two UCI degrees and both are in public health. She received her BA in public health policy in 2016. And then she came back for more receiving her master's in public health with a focus in sociocultural diversity and health in 2019. So two degrees. Um, Z is now a wellness coordinator at Sullivan Curtis Monroe Insurance Services in Irvine. There she creates and implements health assessment surveys and health and wellness programs such as organizing guest speakers, wellness challenges, health fairs, um, flu shot clinics, so just to help and improve the physical, mental, spiritual, financial health of clients and employees as a part of that group. So outside of the office in her passion for public health, she is passionate about yoga, which we are all lucky and will be witnessing shortly. Um, Z said that beyond the physical benefits of yoga, it has taught her focus, discipline, stress relief, and acceptance. I think we could all use a little bit of that right now. So um, you may have taken one of her classes already without even knowing it. If you've been to homecoming in Aldrich Park this past February or the last, she's been um, giving some group classes at our public health homecoming booth. Um, but before I turn it over to Z, just a little bit of housekeeping. Like I said, all guests are muted and no video. We are recording, um, but we'll only be able to see Z and myself. We will have a Q&A at the end, the last 10, 15 minutes. We'll be here for an hour, we'll end by eight. So if you'd like to ask a question of Z about her work, her degree, her yoga experience, um, please use the Q&A feature. Um, not the chat, the Q&A just makes it a little easier for me to read them to her. So without any further ado, let's do this. All right, welcome you guys. So go ahead and let's make our way onto our mat. At least I have to because I was a little bored. And we're actually going to start on our hands and our knees. So come onto your hands and your knees. Place your hands right underneath your shoulders. Take your knees right underneath your hip points. Now go ahead and take your toes together to touch behind you. And then take your knees out wide to the sides of the edge of your mat, so wider than your hips. And take, go ahead and push your hips back towards your heels. Keep reaching the arms forward. Let the heart melt down towards the floor. And then slowly let the forehead come to rest on your mat. Child's pose. So just allow the body to start to release here. Deepen your breath, whether it be in or out of the nose. And just slow it down. Maybe even make the exhale breaths a little longer than the inhale breaths. And as Mary was saying earlier, a lot of us are sitting a lot more lately. So I know my shoulders are feeling tight, my hips are feeling tight, just because we're not moving as much as we were before. 
So for today's class, we're just going to add a little bit of movement and a couple of stretches to target those tight areas. And I hope that you just feel you know, it's a little better after our class. So we're going to start to engage in Ujjayi breath here. This is a breath that we practice a lot in yoga as we go through our movements. Ujjayi breath, fierce breath, victorious breath, are inhales and exhales through the nose with your lips sealed together. You're going to start to create this oceanic sound at the back of the throat as you inhale and exhale through the nose and constrict the back of your throat. So start to breathe in and out through the nose and create that sound. Don't be embarrassed of making a funny noise. It's a beautiful noise of your breath flowing in and out of the body. And this breath also starts to create heat within the belly and it allows us to guide ourselves through our practice. We take a couple more out of breath here. Inhale and exhale through the nose. Feel every part of your body just touching and grounding down into your mat. And if you have every exhale breath, you let something go, whether it's been physical, some tension left in the body, or maybe it's mental, maybe there's something worrying you inside the mind. I want you to try to let that go. Release it up, just for these next couple of moments that we're gonna to share together. Now we're gonna take one breath together. So go ahead and let everything go out of the mouth on your next exhale breath. Side up. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Hold the breath at the top for three, two, and one. Release, let it go. Engage back into your Ujjayi breath. Inhale, exhale through the nose. All right, let's make your way into a tabletop. On your inhale breath, let's roll on forward, coming back to our hands and our knees here. Walk your knees into the right underneath the hip points. Have your hands shoulder width distance apart, planting down. If you know you have tight shoulders, I ask that you maybe take your hands a little wider than shoulder width distance apart. Now, I'm an alignment and junkie, so I really like to do a lot of alignment cues. So notice how much weight you're distributing into your hands. Most of us tend to dump most of our weight on the pinky side edges of the hand and our wrists. I want you to equally push through each finger to this, each finger up and hand here, especially the thumb and index fingers. Now we're gonna go through a couple of cat and cow breaths. So on your inhale breath, arch the upper back, curl the chest up, let the tailbone lift up, let the belly lower down, your gaze goes up. Exhale, push down to the palms. Don't be up the spine like you're creating a hilltop in the thoracic spine. Tuck the tailbone down. Knees the core in and let your gaze go towards your navel, towards your belly. Inhale, arch the back. Tailbone lift back up. Curl up, chest up, gaze up. Exhale, dome spine. Tuck tailbone down. Squeeze the core in once again. Gaze to your navel. Let's do one more. In the core your cow pose. Curl up. Fill it up. Chest up. Exhale for your cat pose. Tuck tailbone down. Go on the spine. Gaze down. Now let's come back into a neutral spine here. We're going to warm up the shoulders. So even though we want to work on more of those static stretches. It is important that we always warm up the body before we hold anything for longer periods of time. So, stay in your tabletop, and then I'll cue a hard variation if you would like to take it. So once the tabletop, we're gonna engage through the core by tapping the tailbone down, drawing the, the pelvis forward, and also shifting our shoulders past our wrists. Notice how much more weight you may be pressing into the pinky side of the hand. Re-engage, press into the thumb and index fingers. 
Now, if you would like to work a little harder, tuck the toes behind you, lift the knees up, come into a full plank. Stretching the heels back, tugging that tailbone under, shooting your chest forward, shoulders still forward of this. Fold for three, two, and one. Lower the knees down, push your hips back, take your toes here to touch child's pose. Now we're gonna do this one more time, holding for five solid breaths. Continue to warm up the shoulders. Inhale, lift up, tabletop. If you would like to take a full plank, tuck the toes. Lift the kneecaps up, full plank. And remember, take this practice to where your body best feels comfortable. I'm only here to guide you, but you know your body best. You know its limits, you know where it can go. Three more breaths here, so after we tuck the tailbone down. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze that core, and your shoulders are actually shooting forward of a rest here for one. On your exhale breath, lower the knees down. Take your toes together to touch. Push your hips back. Child's pose. Nice job. And we're gonna come back then. So inhale, lift up back into your tabletop. Exhale to lower down to our belly. Walk your feet, your legs to be about shoulder width distance apart here. The tops of the feet are down, and your hands are right beside your floating wrist, so right underneath the armpits. Now really press down into your palms. Your forehead can be resting on the floor for now. And then I want you to have to be through the legs, so point, point, point those feet to the back wall. Flex the calves, flex the quads, kneecaps pulling up, and start to tuck that tailbone down so that the booty is trying to speed down towards your heels. After we press the tops of the feet down. Now, start to engage through the core. Squeeze your belly in. Continue to tuck the tailbone down. Press into the palms. Start to curl up. Lift the forehead. Lift the head. Lift the shoulders. Lift the chest off the ground. Cobra pose. Now, as you're in this little mini back bend here, I want you to squeeze your elbows towards one another. They are never going to touch. That's not the point. But we're just going to activate through the lats here. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze with elbows towards one another. Maybe press into the palms a bit more to curl up a little higher. Nose the legs. Maybe lots of engagement here. Actively press the tops of the feet down. Point through the toes. Flex those quads and calves. And now we're going to work the strength of the pose. So begin to hover both hands off of the ground. Use the strength of your upper back to keep yourself lifted. You can stay here with the hands hovering, or you can extend the arms back behind you towards your feet. As still reaching forward. Inhale to create length up. Curl up here for three. You got this. Two. And one. Lower yourself all the way back down. Nice job, ladies. All right, shoulder stretch now. So go ahead and take your right hand out to the side. I want that right arm to be right in line with the right shoulder. So go ahead and look at your arm placement and make sure that it's right in line with the shoulder. And we're gonna start to actually roll over the right shoulder. Now, the point is not just to look like me. I might be able to get a little deep into the pose, but maybe you don't have to get that deep slope of the stretch. So start to roll yourself over the right shoulder. Maybe you take that left leg to plant down the left foot. And then you can release the left hand right down beside you in front of the chest. Or maybe you take it behind the back in a half wrap. So continue to stay here. You don't have to look exactly like me. Maybe you're just as you're just here, and you still feel the nice stretch in the right shoulder. Continue to breathe here. Can you ready breath that we practice and start a class? Deep inhale and exhale through the nose. Point through the right toes. Firm down through the left foot. Holding here for three, two, and one. Go ahead. And roll back to the on the belly. And we're going to go to the other side. So left arm stretches out to the side, right in line with the left shoulder. 
and begin to roll over the left shoulder, just like we did on the right side. Only go to where you feel the stretch, so it may not look as deep as me, but you're still getting the same stretch. Maybe that right foot slides down, but no matter what, point through that left foot. Right hand can stay right in front of you at the chest, or we could half wrap it behind the back so you can get another stretch in the right shoulder. The head can release down to the floor, it doesn't have to stay lifted. And you can even close your eyes here and just melt into the stretch. Connect back with your breath. breath. You just let it go. Feel the rise and fall of the belly every single time you take a breath. You can really plant down with that left palm down into the floor. Up and around the breath. All right, let's slowly release. Roll back to be on the belly. Plant the palms once again to be right underneath your floating ribs. Tuck your toes behind you so your heels are looking up. And let's just go ahead and press ourselves back up into the tabletop. And we're going to come into a downward facing dog. So go ahead and set your feet to be about hip width distance apart. Have your hands shoulder width distance apart. If you know your shoulders are tighter, take them out wider. Press down into the thumb and index fingers. Begin to tuck the tailbone under. Lift the knees up. Push your hips up and back. Stretch the heels down. Auto the samasana. Downward facing dog. Now again, you don't have to look like me. My legs are fully extended, but your knees can be set as well to protect your hamstrings. Actively push your hips back toward your legs. Your gaze should be right in between your feet. If you would like to work a little harder, your gaze can actually go towards the belly. It's okay with your neck. Notice the hands. Are you pressing more to hit the pinky side of, the, of your hands? Press down to the thumb and fingers. And rotate the tricep back. Squeeze that belly in. Breathe here. Now, no matter what, if your legs are bent or fully extended, actually stretch your heels down to get that nice stretch in the calves. Breathe here for a couple more rounds of breath. Four, one. Two. Three. Four. Keep the belly engaged. And five. Let's make our way to the back of the mat. So walk, walk, walk. Walk those hands back toward your feet. And keep your feet in hip with this apart. Grab onto the elbows here. We're going to come into a rag doll position. So your knees should be pretty bent so we can start to get more of a release in our lower back here rather than the hamstrings. So I'm really bending my knees, letting myself be here down to the floor. And just begin to rock from side to side here. Add the movements. And maybe shake the head no. Or nod the head yes. Release tension that might be lingering in the neck. And take the slave as subtle or as big as you want. Feel the body. So in yoga, it's all about connecting into your body and being very aware of its limits and also where it can go. So you know if you can go a little deeper, take it there, but just be mindful of your body. So if you know you need to take it back, take it back. That's totally fine. It's a practice. All right, let's go ahead and slow down the sleeves. Release your hands towards the floor. So plant your palms down to help with your hand being flat down to the floor. Bend those knees deep, 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 deep. On your inhale breath, we're going to come into a halfway lift. Take your hands to your shins. Extend halfway up, reach your chest forward to the front of your mat. And exhale, plant your palms again, forward fold over your legs. Utanasana. Let's do two more halfway lifts. Inhale, hard Utanasana. Lift halfway up, hands to the shins. I'm going to give your fingertips to the floor, chest forward. Exhale, Utanasana, forward fold. One more time. Inhale, lift up, hard Utanasana, halfway lift. Exhale, Uttanasana, take your fold. Let's rise up slowly. Inhale, reach up, lift up, extend those arms up to the side. 
Bring your palms together to touch at the top. We're going to go ahead and lift your knees up as well. And exhale, take your hand down to your heart center. Close the eyes and just come back to the breath. Slow it down. Feel the rise and fall of the chest, the filling of the belly. With every inhale, you take and exhale as well. Release your hands by your sides. We're going to take a couple of lateral stretches here. So feet still hip width distance apart here. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Take your right hand to grab onto the left wrist. Bump your hips over to the left. And reach your arms up and over to the right. Extend, 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 and reach. Now again, you don't have to look like me. Yoga is not about comparing yourself to others. It's just about finding your potential in your body and working to working towards, you know, getting stronger throughout the practice. Now we tend to want to dump down and actually want to rotate your right ribs up. So we spin our chest up to the sky more and reach those left fingertips to the right. Push your hips to the left here for three, two, and one. Let's come back up. Inhale, breath. Touch on the exhale. Left hand grabs right wrist. Bump your hips to the right this time. Reach your arms over to the left. Extend those right wrists to the left. Rotate your left ribs up to the sky. Release that right shoulder down away from the ear for three, two, and one. And a lift back up. Arms extend high. Exhale, bend the elbows, open up through the chest. Keep the chest moving up. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Back bend here. Inhale, lift the arms back up. Let's do this two more times. Open up the chest. Exhale, bend, open the elbows, chest up. Hips slightly forward. Inhale, lift back up. Last one, we'll do and we'll add on. Exhale, bend the elbows, chest lift up. Lift, lift, lift. Feel that upper back so stretch out. Release the hands behind the back at the sacrum and interlace the fingers together here. Now, inhale. Pull the arms down the back. Keep that chest lifted up. Exhale, bend the knees, hinge from the hips. Forward fold and begin to take your arms up and over the head. Now, some people may be here, maybe you might you have more open shoulders, you can take your arms up a little more, but just work towards the stretch to wherever your body can go to do. So just be mindful. Don't try to force the stretch because that's when muscles will tear. We don't want that. There's been a couple times where I've definitely tear, torn a muscle here and there. So just again, be mindful of the body and know its limits. Release the hand down to the floor. Inhale, halfway lift, lift up. Have your hands the shins or fingertips on the floor, chest up. Exhale, plant your palms. Walk those feet back. Let's come back into our downward facing dog. And hold your downward dog here. Press your hips down, for, your heels down towards your mat. Pushing your hips back, back, back to the wall. Really pressing down through the thumb and index fingers of the hands. All right. Inhale, reach that right leg up and back. Three leg dog. Extend it up to the wall, towards the ceiling here. Now, you know, we have this cue, squaring of the hips. If you look at the screen, you can see my hip, my right hip is actually higher than my left hip. Instead, I want to square my hips to parallel to face my mat. So I'm going to lower my right hip down, lift my left hip up, but keep my right leg extending up to the side. Going through the left, right toes, keep pushing your hips and chest back. Deep inhale, breath here. Exhale, shift forward into a high plank as you hug your knees to your chest. And then step the foot forward in between the hands. If it doesn't get there, grab that right hand to the right, right ankle and pound it there. Now lower the left knee down to the floor. And let's come to a low lunge here. So take your hand to your fist just as far. And we're going to still square our hips. So right hip back, left hip forward. Deep bend in that right knee. Try to get that knee stacked right over your ankle here. If it goes past, maybe. You take a longer lunge and walk that back leg further back. 
Keep the left toes tucked to consent energy through the left leg. And now reach your arms up to the side. Reach, reach, reach. Palms facing towards one another. Square your hips. Right hip back, left hip forward. Release the shoulder down the back. We may want to tense up toward the ears. Deep breaths here. We bend into that right knee. Let your body feel the stretch in the front of that left quad or hip flexors. Deep inhale here. Exhale, we're going to come into a half split. So this is when our blocks may come in handy, but if you don't have blocks, that's totally fine. We're going to straighten through the right leg. And it's okay if it doesn't fully straighten. You can have a slight bend in that right knee as well. And the blocks will be right underneath your hands. Now, we're working on this half split stretch, working on opening through that right hamstring. So flex your right foot towards your face so that you can activate through that hamstring here. But still push to the ball of the right foot. So push it forward. It's like pointing. So you're flexing and you're also pointing the foot. Keep your chest lifting up. Deep inhale breath here. Exhale, maybe you can forward fold over the right leg a bit more. Releasing down. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, re-bend the right knee. Take the right foot and walk it towards the right side of your mat. So that your pinky side of the right foot is touching the right outer edge of your mat. Take both hands inside of the right foot. And we're going to come into a little lizard. We're already here. So now you can let those hips sink down. You might feel a nice stretch in the hips here. And you can even untuck the toes behind you. Now you can stay here on the hands. If you feel comfortable enough, you can lower down onto your forearms. If you have the mobility to do so, do not force the stretch. No matter where you are, keep your chest rooting forward, leaning forward, and squeeze your right knee in towards your arms here. So really working on those adductors, those inner thighs, squeeze the knee in towards the midline. Really press down through the, ball, the top, the top of the left foot. Keep energized energy through that left leg. All right, forearms. Come back to the hands if you're down. And now we're going to work towards pigeon. So walk that right foot towards the left side of your mat now. So all the way to the left, and then let the right knee lower down to the floor. Now, depending on how open your hips are, your shin might be parallel to the front edge of the mat. If it's not, have the right heel actually come closer to the left hip. Begin to slide, slide, slide that left leg back so it's fully extended back behind you. And once you're situated, walk your hands to be framing the hips. Press into the palm, lift the heart up, arch the back, and exhale, walk your hands forward. Release yourself into a forward fold here. And even though we are in this position, this prone position, you can still find activation through the leg. So push the right hand forward, put right hand back, I mean, and then reach left hip forward. Keep your chest reaching forward. Even like use the strength of your glutes to actively push the right hand down towards the floor. It's okay if it doesn't touch over time through practice. You can just be weak, it could over time. But that's just the journey of yoga. So don't feel bad if it doesn't touch before. You might not touch it before. Just resonate in this stretch in this moment. And feel the body out. And this stretch is really good to do for longer periods of time. I know one class that I took, my teacher had me in this pose for five minutes long. Definitely could not walk after it because it was five minutes each side. But my hips really got open. So if you have the time at home, maybe as you're binge watching something on Netflix, like I binge watch Tiger Game, you can take these, you can do these stretches at home. It's pretty easy to do. All right, let's go ahead and walk our hands back underneath the shoulders. 
Tuck the toes down to behind you. And let's come back into that three-legged dog. So lift that right leg, take it up and back to the side, three-legged dog. And lower the leg back down, exhale breath, knee to the floor. We got one more side of these. Left leg reaches up and back. Inhale breath, three-legged dog. Remember, try to square those hips. The left hip hunkers down, right hip lifts up, but you're still extending through the left leg, pointing through the left toes, pushing your, your body, your torso back, and stretching your left, right heel down to the floor. Deep in, I'll bring it here. Exhale, knee into your chest, roll forward into a high plank, and then step the left foot in between the hands. If it doesn't get there, take that left hand, grab on the ankle, and then walk it right there. Lower the right knee down. Take your hands to your hips to prep. And bend that left knee over your ankle once again. Square your hips. This time, left hip back, right hip forward. Right toes are tucked behind you. Lift your arms up to the side. Keep your chest lifted. Squeeze the core in. Try not to overly banana back. Squeeze, 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 squeeze the core in. And as the arms are lifting up, Release your shoulders down. We tend to just want to have our shoulders lift up to the ears. Release, 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 and relax them down. Here for a couple more rounds of breath. Easing deeper into that left knee. And actively push the right heel back behind you. Here for two. And one. Go ahead and walk the hands, release the hands down to the floor. Extend the left leg, coming into our half splits once again. Ardha Hanumanasana. Flexing that left foot towards our face here, but still pointing, pushing through the big toe out of the left foot forward. We're pointing that foot. Square hips once again, left hip back, right hip forward. Inhale, chest lifts up. And so pull forward if you would like. And lead with the chest here. Pull it over the left leg. Lift that left foot towards your face. Push that left hip back. Really get into that left hamstring. All right, next, inhale back. Breathe in that left knee, come back into a little lunge. And then go ahead and walk that left foot to the outside edge of that left, so the left mat towards the edge. Take your left hand inside the foot. You are in a low lizard. Feel free to stay here on the hands if you feel comfortable and it's in your practice. Come to the forearms. Now that left knee wants to push out to the left. Squeeze it back in towards your midline, in towards your right arm, in towards the chest. Really press down into the big toe mound of that left foot. Use that adductor strength. Squeeze the left knee in. Keep your core tight here. Three. Forearms come back to the hands. And let's go ahead and walk that left foot over to the right side of the mat. So walk, 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 walk. And allow the knee and the shin to lower down, coming into half king pigeon. So again, maybe your hips are open enough to be parallel to the front of your mat, but if they're not, have that left foot coming closer towards the right hip. Once it's there, slide that right leg back behind you. You can keep the toes tucked or untucked if you prefer. Walk your hands towards your hips. Press down to the palms. Inhale, chest up to the step. And exhale, walk the hands forward. Forward fold over the left shin. Square your hips, push the left hip back, right forward. And notice the difference of the stretch on this side. So my left side is actually a lot tired than my right side. Mostly because I've definitely injured my left side a lot more. Um, but the beauty of yoga is that it teaches us the imbalances of our body. And because like if you think about it, we do a lot of things on one side. Like how many of you who brush your teeth with your right hand ever stop and brush your teeth with the left hand? Probably never do that, right? Maybe you will tomorrow, you will tonight. So yoga actually teaches us to learn those imbalances in our body and 
has us work towards balancing them once again. But I know my right and my left side is actually a lot tighter here. I really feel it in my glute lead at the side part of the glute. So maybe when I'm practicing at home, I actually hold this foot a little longer to the right, and that's totally fine. One more round of breath here. Keep the belly hugging in. All right. Let's walk our hands back underneath the shoulders. Cup the right toes behind us. Press into the palms. Lift that left leg back and up three legged like dog once again. And then exhale, lower leg back down to the floor. Adam and Bosanasana. Now we're up. Release the knee and chin down to the mat. We're going to come into melting heart pose as we start to open up through the upper back. The other, well, other back even more. So try to keep your hips stacked over your knees as much as they can. You can walk your hands forward out in front of you and start to melt, melt, melt your heart towards the floor. Now some of you may just have your forehead rest on the mat and that is totally fine. If you're a little bit more mobile in the upper back, maybe take your chin to rest. Maybe keep the chin and chest to rest. No matter where you are, you're still getting a great stretch. Push those hips back. Try to keep your hips over your knees as much as they can. As you raise your chest forward here, you're going to be getting deep into the upper back muscles, the lats, rhomboids, triceps, everything there, even adults. And notice, are you still practicing that with steady breath? Deep in on the exhale through them. Continue to breathe. All right, let's slowly come out of the pose. Walk, walk. So to just roll yourself forward and then walk your hands up. And let's go ahead and make our way back onto our back. Roll onto your back, extend those legs out in front of you. And maybe if you have a strap, feel free to get it. If not, you don't need a strap, it's totally fine. We're going to work on our hamstrings one more time. So if you have the strap, you're going to actually lasso the strap on the ball of the right foot and take the strap onto either side of the right, of, well, onto the, into the hands. And you're just going to stay here as you pull the leg closer towards you. If you don't have a strap, totally fine. Just use your hands to grab. Um, behind the, at the right hamstring. The knee can be slightly bent depending on how open your hamstrings are. And just actively pull the leg closer towards you. But no matter where you are, I want you to keep that leg activated. So the knee is bent, point that right foot. If the leg is fully extended, pull up the left knee, right knee cap, and flex the quad. And every inhale breath, just pull, just take deep inhale breaths. And exhale, maybe you can bring the leg closer towards your face. And feel free to walk your hands further down the leg, maybe towards the ankle, or maybe even grab on some foot. And actively push through the heels here, pull that kneecap up. Breathe. And then go ahead and release the foot down to meet the left. Other side, if you've got a strap, go ahead and lasso up the big toe mount of that left foot with the strap. Grab onto the strap with the left and right hand. If you don't have a strap, totally fine. Grab onto the left hamstring with both hands. Inhale here. Exhale, pull the leg closer towards you. Working through into that left hamstring once again. Feeling free to slide the hand down the leg even more. If you would like, if you have the ability to do so. If you don't, that's totally fine. No judgment here. Keep the leg active. If the knee is bent, point to the toes. If the, pulls, if the leg is fully extended, let your point. It doesn't really matter. Here for two. And one, release. Let's take a little twist. 
So keep the left leg where it is. Bend the right knee, hug it into your chest, and take your hands onto the shin. Now keep the left hand on the right knee. Open the right arm out to the side. And use your left hand to guide the right knee over to the left and come into a supine twist. Now the goal is not to get that right knee to touch the floor. However, I do want you to actually keep your right shoulder grounded on the mat. And twist, twist, twist through the core. So even though that right leg, right knee is going to the left, I want you to think left ribs twisting to the right. Bending your chest more to the right here. And maybe gently push, push, push the right hand down towards, the right knee towards the floor. A couple more rounds of breath. And let's slowly unwind, back to center. Extend the right leg forward, bend left knee, right hand on top of left knee, left arm out wide to the side, in line with the right left shoulder. Inhale here, exhale twist, left knee over to the right, keeping the left shoulder grounded as you take the knee to the right, but rotate right ribs, right side of the chest to the left. Your knees can stay up, or maybe your knees can go to the left, whatever you prefer. And breathe. Okay, go ahead and unwind. Hug your knees into your chest. Grab the arms around your shins. Inhale, lift the forehead to your knees. Give yourself a nice big squeeze. And exhale, release everything down. And let's do the Badakonasana. Suit the Badakonasana specifically. So bring the soles of your feet together, just as so. And then allow the legs to lower down towards the floor. Knees out wide to the side here. And allow gravity to do its natural thing and push the knees down towards the floor. You can keep your arms open wide out to the side. Or maybe you take your right hand on top of the belly, left arm on top of the heart. And just find your breath here. Soften the gaze until the eyes come to a gentle flow. I'm going to guide you through a brief Hanayama practice using breath work to slow everything down. So go ahead and release everything out of the mouth. Let it all go. Deep inhale through the nose. And so let go out of the mouth. Two more. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. One more. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. Release the hands off the body if you took that variation. Extend both legs forward out in front of you. And just keep the eyes closed. Rest in the spinal pose we call Shavasana. Yogi rest for food. At the end of every yoga class, we tend to, we always do this pose just to give our body time to reflect on our practice and time to rest. And it may be hard to stay still and to not think of anything. Try your best just to be in this moment, present on your mat, present with yourself, and just breathe and relax. Thank you. 
breath coming in and out. We're going to start to slowly reawaken the body here. So deepen your breath once again. Begin to whittle out the toes and fingertips. Rotate your ankles and wrists. Your inhale breath, reach the arms up and over your head. Squeeze your legs together and point the toes forward. And exhale, roll onto your favorite side, right or left. Curl into a little ball into a nice, comfortable seat. Feel the position. And then slowly press yourself back up into a comfortable seat, crossing at the shins. Bring your palms together, heart center. Bowing your head down to your heart. Thank you all for allowing me to guide you through this a little short practice. Thank you, UCI. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you, Wendy, for putting us all together. The light in me honors the light in each and every one of you. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Z. That's such a good practice to do at the end of the day. Yes, I agree. I I could sleep like a baby right now. <laughs> wow, and for everybody that has joined us, that is just a small taste of the classes that Z takes that are typically an hour and 15 minutes long of standing on your head and sweating buckets. So that was a really nice, peaceful, stretching, heart opening, especially for what our lives are like these days. So thank you so much. We're getting so many nice compliments here. Thank you guys for joining. I'm really happy. It's always a pleasure to be able to share my practice with everyone. And again, as Meredith said, this is like a little short little snippet. She's been to some of my actual classes where I've had people take their leg behind their head a couple times. <laughs> but even though you might see on Instagram, there might be all these cool yoga tricks. Those are just for Instagram. So you will get followers. Yoga is so much more than that. It's so much more about nailing that handstand or nailing that crazy pose. It's just all about you finding yourself, learning to once again love your body for all its perfections and imperfections, and just going through that journey. And say you do want to hit that crazy pose, let yourself go through that journey at your own pace with no rush and just find the beauty of the practice. Yeah, thank you. That's really beautiful. Yeah. So we have a few minutes left for some questions for Z about her career, her life as a yogi. Um, while they're coming in, the first one is, can you tell us a little about your yoga journey and, and when you became certified and what brought you to that? Oh, gosh. Okay, so I'm sure a lot of you guys may have taken Math 2A and 2B. Now, those classes were the bane of my existence. Um, Calculus just does not resonate with me. And while taking math to be, my, I was super stressed. And that is literally the reason why I started yoga, because of math to be. So I went to take Uris at UCI. I'm, just, I'm pretty sure he's still there. He's been there for a long time. It was Wednesday, yeah, it was Wednesday night at about 5.30. And not gonna lie, I came out of that class super zen. And I'm like, what is this? I like it. Where do I sign up? Kept going. But honestly, I never thought I would ever become a yoga instructor. Um, but after I graduated, I got a job at a yoga and spin studio. It wasn't this one, um, but I continued my practice there. And there was an opportunity for me to basically get my teacher training for free. And yoga training is really expensive. It could be as low as 2,800 to as high as 4,000 for just a basic 200 hours. So when that opportunity came to me, I was like, you know what, let's just do it. And here I am now. How I think I started my practice in 2015. Yeah, my five year anniversary was like a month ago. And it's just crazy to see how I've just improved myself physically and mentally and just learned to love myself through my yoga practice. So UCI gave your, you your degree, your career, your passion, your extra. It just all goes back to uh, Irvine and Aldrich Park. That's amazing. Exactly, yeah. 
please feel free to share any questions for Z in the Q&A feature. Um, Z, do you feel like speaking about your degree in this, um, your life as a yogi, do you feel like they're connected, especially in the current role that you have as a wellness coordinator? So my degree connected with, I mean, of course, just because my degree, my background is in public health. I'm all about preventative care. And I forget what in, um, professor at UCI said this, but it's super, it's a super radical idea. But the goal of public health is to eliminate the doctor. Not saying doctors aren't necessary, but we want to prevent you from going to the doctor, right? And same with yoga is just to prevent potential, like, um, I guess, um, chronic illnesses you can get in the future, like arthritis or anything like that. So they're pretty intertwined. So public health, I am really passionate about public health. I'm definitely more of the, I guess, the physical side of wanting to make sure that people are always physically healthy. But yoga has actually want me to tap deeper into the mental health side, just because as, I mean, we're all going through this right now. And what's not being taught about, taught, taught a lot in the media is our mental health and how people are feeling right now. And so I'm taking the, I'm, I'm trying to take the initiative to just reach out to my friends and ask them like, hey, how are you? How's everything? Is there anything I can do, to you, do for you? Even just a quick text, a quick DM on Facebook, on Instagram, or just even a call or a Zoom meeting. So both definitely intertwine. Both I'm very, very passionate about, and I see myself definitely staying in this career. Um, I mean, yoga is a nice side gig, but my future goal, my main goal is to work at uh, maybe even like the Department of Public Health. That would be kind of cool. Um, okay. But just further spreading, spreading the joy of yoga, but also teaching, especially underprivileged communities, how to you know, better their health in any way possible. We have a question from Stephanie. Um, she's starting her MPH in the same concentration this fall. Yay! Congratulations, Yay. Stephanie. Um, she's wondering if we have any recommendations for new MPH students. As for, ooh, let me tell you something about grad school. It's different and it's hard, but it's not impossible. Know that when you're entering, professors are going to expect a lot of you out of you, but they're not always, they're not there to coddle you. And I wouldn't say that an undergrad the professor coddled you just because, I mean, there could be 400 people in a classroom, but there were, it was just a lot easier in some ways. And I don't want to downgrade undergrads saying that it's a lot easier because there are definitely a lot of struggles in undergrad because honestly, GEs, oh my gosh, oof. But in grad school, because when you go into your degree field and you're coming into the one that I did, you get so, you get into like the nitty gritty stuff and it can be very overwhelming. One thing that my cohort did, did is that we had study groups and I even lived with one of my classmates, which was really helpful. And we just made sure that whenever we had like a hard test coming up or there was a subject that both went over our heads, we connected with each other. So the biggest thing, that I, the biggest advice I can give to you is make friends with your cohort. That, because it's going to be small. I think mine was maybe 25 people, so it's not that big. Um, and you will definitely get through it. Um, it will be difficult. There'll be times where you're like, biostats, what's going on? What is Dr. Bartel saying? But mm -hmm. trust me, <laughs> you will get through it. I did, and I'm not a math person and you will love the program at UCI. It will teach you a lot. One more 30 second question, then I have an announcement. Everyone can continue on this Zen feeling in their evenings. Um, Rich is asking, do you find more people engaging in yoga given the current situation that we're all in? Yes, so my yoga studio, we actually, I don't know how it is so quickly, but they turned around and started doing yoga sessions. And I think at one point I had like 60 people online Mass capacity at the big room, I see is 50 people. So I think just the comfort of you being in your own home, knowing that you're not outside, putting yourself at a potential risk of getting the disease, and also being able to connect with everybody. Because we're on a Zoom call. Unlike this, we actually are able to see each other. You have the option, of course, turning off your camera, but it's just so nice to be able to see familiar faces and practice, the, practice your yoga class at home, but it just feels like you're still 
in the studio with everyone. So definitely an increase, major increase. I think I could do a few of those stretches tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, thank you, Z, so much. Um, so everybody that has joined us tonight, um, we will be back, not us, but there will be another session hosted by the Iranian chapter next Wednesday at 7 p.m., same time. Um, so make sure you register on the Alumni Association website. The title of this is Career Strategies in Uncertain Times. And this is really open to all different places in your career, um, new career, career you've had for 20 years. So um, those folks will be sharing their journeys and their tips and tools and strategies for, for navigating um, what takes up so much of our day during these uncertain times. So a follow-up email will be coming shortly after from the team. So if you have any information or questions, you can ask them. And again, thank you for being with us. Wishing you all health and safety and happiness. Take care of each other and yourself. Namaste. Thank you, Z. Thank you thank so you much. Thoughts thought. Thoughts thought. Thoughts thought. thought. <laughs>